Mm, Energy 808, the cutting edge. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. And the smiling young man is Leo Asuncion. He's our special guest. And he is the new, brand new PUC chair. And my co-host is Marco Mangelsdorf. Marco, will you give an appropriate, uh, invita- uh, not invitation, can you give an appropriate uh, introduction to Leo? Uh, we should know more about him than that. I'll do my best, Jay. Well, first, thank you, Jay, for us being together again. Thank you, Leo, so very much for being with us now uh, in your new position as chair of the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission. I do so appreciate you uh, coming on today and agreeing to uh, to talk about all sorts of hopefully interesting and juicy things. So uh, Leo is uh, going on his uh, third year, if I'm not mistaken, third year on the commission, was named by Governor David Ige uh the end of june uh to be the new chair taking over for jay griffin who departed on the 30th of june and uh we go from here so i'll just kind of lead it right up uh, or tee right up for you leo as far as a topical question uh jay just let me know moments ago point electric's announcement that uh, there's going to be uh, uh at least the hopes for and the planning for the moving forward for uh a 17 megawatt solar system solar array with a commensurate uh, battery storage there on the island of Lanai, and uh, I was rather surprised. Although I shouldn't have been surprised to see that the uh, the company behind it is Nextera Energy Resources, or Near for short, it's a part of Nextera Energy, which is the company that tried and failed to buy One Electric Industries back in 2016. So they are back. Nextera is back. So uh, what's your take? Um, my take is uh, right. We've been trying to get. Uh, renewable resources, uh, specifically solar, uh, on Lanai for a while. Uh, right, it was part of the phase two uh, RFP. Um, but we had a unique uh, situation here in Lanai, right? We have one single landowner, uh, majority landowner, and then we also had a site right, very near to the existing power plant uh, that is owned by uh, Kulama Lanai, right? So. So working with them uh, through different iterations, uh, we got the site. Uh, it's okay. Everybody got, you know, everybody who bid into uh, that particular RFP for the island and Lanai got to see the site, ask their questions, everything, and the like, and and out pops, right? Uh, city area of Nextera Energy uh, as the as the one that selected to to do the project. So. Terrific from that standpoint. I don't give any credence to uh, who's behind, you know, the, the actual company that's doing it. Uh, that is all the selection of Hawaiian Electric. Uh, they now need to right get that power purchase agreement uh, before the commission uh, and make sure that we're we're okay with it, right? Do our due diligence and do our review on it. Um, and you know, the other one. The next one that I'm kind of looking forward to is uh, hopefully Molokai comes in, uh, right? We've allowed them to uh, have a community uh, kind of like energy plan, if you will, created for the island. So we were ready to go about the same time as the Lanai RFP, and then the community came in and said, "Hold on, let us have a say in what to do on the island." So we're letting them go through that. I believe we gave uh, kind of like a year for them to do it. Uh, they're doing the plan with HNEI, uh, and we'll see what pops out from there, right? And then then the RFP process can can start, right? As far as uh, you'll see what the island what the island residents want as far as renewable energy, then the RFP would take take suit there. But for Lanai, I mean, it's a long time coming. It's one, right? It's one of the smaller loads on the island, but to get you know a a solar project, right? Lanai is no uh, no stranger to other renewable res- resource projects in the past, uh, but this go around, it's going to be solar, and it's kind of in line with with what we thought would happen. Uh, but then, right now, it's make that project a go. Mm-hmm. No, that's great. Thank you so much for for your take on that. So, kind of take kind of take a take a step back. Uh, I'd like to ask you. Uh, what are your uh, your impressions and experiences so far taking over the bigger chair? I don't know if they actually gave you a bigger chair, but a bigger chair in terms of responsibility, right? I know, you know, it's kind of human to think, uh, 
you have an anticipation and kind of expectation about what a new position might be. I mean, it's, it's new in the sense of you're, you're a commissioner, you were a commissioner, you are a commissioner, but now you have a, you know, a, a, a more expanded portfolio. So I'm always kind of curious, you know, how does your, the actual experience now that you're, tw you know, 25 days into it, how does that line up with what you expected? Well, I think, um, you know, the, the chair, the chair's position, just like every other kind of head of agency uh, in the state is pretty similar. Uh, what gets tacked on is more the administrative item, the day-to-day -day items. Um, at the same time, we're, you know, we're fortunate here at the commission that we do have an executive officer on staff, so I can kind of delegate some of the day-to-day -day items to her uh, and have her, you know, run the shop, if you will. And that actually opens up uh, for the commissioners, myself and my other fellow commissioners, to really look at Right, the dockets, things that comes before us, work with staff as far as recommendations and the like, uh, of things we want to see. Uh, I can tell you, uh, I'm sure in the in the near future you can have a uh, have Naomi Kawai on on your show, hopefully, uh, and you'll see that it's a different take. She comes with different experiences and the like uh, after about 30 years in in private practice as an attorney. Uh, from the land use and environmental side, uniquely, right? but she also has dealt with PUC in the past as a, as a consultant, if you will, uh, to mostly talk on folks. Because she got to bring that experience, and so we're taking a look, a hard look across our organization, right, including the commissioners, to see where best we can help uh, as commissioners help the staff develop. Uh, help to get the projects and the or the dockets through in a timely manner, um, and kind of take take a look at our backlog and also to prepare for the future, right? The, the near term and the long term future. Mm -hmm. I get going to maybe uh, uh, Oahu specific. I mean, we are a little more than a month away, as mm -hmm. I count the days from the AES coal power plant going offline for good, which is uh, one of the largest uh, in terms of generation capacity power plants on Oahu. And I'm wondering, you know, what what is your level of uh, concern, if any, for that matter, about Hawaiian Electric's ability to be able to have an adequate reserve margin post AES, especially as we're getting into uh, typically the peak demand uh, times of the year, which is, you know, December, January and so forth. Yeah, I mean, we continue to work with Hawaiian Electric, make sure that they will meet uh, the minimum reserve that they are required to meet. Uh, to meet. Um, they have set standards at the utility as well, which is pretty much a little bit higher than, than what minimum is, right, and what is adequate. Um, they have shown that uh, when we did when we had HNEI take a look at the reliability, the bike, um, through the end of this year with AES shutting down, what we needed to find was 38, I mean, 38 megawatts of power, right? And most of that is going to come for the rest of this year uh, from Mililani 1, right? Which is a project that's uh, about to come online. I believe they're shooting for November. Uh, I heard last week that they kind of checked the last box on the testing uh, of the of the, the resource, and they're online or they're on 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 track to come online uh, November or earlier, right? It just depends on the validation of all of those tests and the like. So, so we have that time uh, now. The next part is going to be uh, next summer, right? That's another part when we, we're going to see the reliability dip again. Right. In the meanwhile, right, we do have two more, five more projects, renewable solar projects coming online in 2023 at various times. Um, so some of them will come in the first, second quarter, I believe, a uh, couple of energy systems, which is the largest uh, solar and battery project on Oahu, uh, will come online in the first or second quarter of the year. So that should tide us over. And then there's a few other. Uh, renewable resource projects that are coming online as well. Um, so 
what I've seen from Hawaiian Electric is they continually uh, try to look at how they maintain their existing resources, right? And if they did nothing and AAS went down, uh, you would see a very slim margin, uh, somewhere on the lines of about 38 to 40 uh, megawatts. Uh, of, that's where the reserve would be. They, and they've shown us that if they kind of extend or defer some maintenance for like about three to four months on some of the units, at plan, uh, they can get up to 120 megawatts in reserve, right? So it's all about, at, at this point, not gonna get any more renewable resource projects uh, in ground running operational by the end of the year. So we're looking at how can we now defer some maintenance, right? take these certain units offline, the maintenance and to get them back online. So, I, I look at those charts and it's kind of like Tetris, right? You kind of kind of fit whatever shape kind in order to keep it below uh, the the, re, the minimum reserve, right? If you got to thirty, if they get thirty two, if like every other generator goes down in the meantime, yeah, I would lose sleep. But right now it's going to be right. How do you, how do you defer and for how many months? Can you push stuff out? I will say also, right, Kalailoa Partners, uh, they kind of move their, uh, their usual annual maintenance up a couple of months, right? So they're actually, I believe like last month, uh, they went, right, and did their, you know, take a look at their annual maintenance and they did that. So they're ready to go, right? Come the day AES goes down. So and some of the IPPs also looked at their, their particular generator and looking at their maintenance schedule to kind of make sure that they be there. So that allows right, ECO to kind of move their maintenance plans out. Let me let me ask you a follow-up question as well uh, in terms of Maui. Uh, there was that letter that came from, that was published uh, publicized from, I believe it was Mitsubishi to Maui Electric regarding the Malaya power plant, essentially telling Maui Electric that as far as getting uh, replacement components for, for equipment there, uh, they weren't gonna be able to do that anymore, which puts that plant in a greater risk, I guess, uh, as far as possible breakdowns and being able to keep it online. And then you've got Kyle Louie that is scheduled to go down off for good, if I'm not mistaken, in 2024. So it, it seems it's not just Oahu specific in terms of perhaps tight reserve margins, but also on, on Maui. Is there any wiggle room, let's say for the Kahului plant uh, to not be uh, shut down, decommissioned in 2024? Uh, my understanding is that there are permits to operate, permits they got from the Department of Health and also the county actually goes beyond 2024, right? So it's going to be the decision that uh, Maui Electric, Hawaiian Electric needs to do, uh, needs to make is, right, do you go for an extension on those or allow it to go, I believe it's a, one permit allows them to go to 2025, right? And one other permit go, allows them to go to 2026, right? Let's just take 2025 as really the drop dead date for Kahului, should they want to you know, continue operation? Question is, do you go up to 2025 or do you seek an extension on those permits just in case, right? You could go beyond that. Um, so that's, that's more Hawaiian Electric that needs to take a look at that. Uh, likewise, on Maui, we have a couple of right, renewable projects that are slated to come online. Uh, some of them are facing some opposition um, you know, from communities that do not want project in their backyard. And at the same time, I still remember one of the arguments that particular community made was that Maui doesn't need a renewable generation, right? They, they did their numbers and that's, that was their argument. And here are two. Now granted, that was pre-pandemic, right? Pre-announcement by Mitsubishi and the like. We are, only thing we knew at that time was Kahului was going to shut down in 2024. Okay. So they made that argument and they keep fighting uh, opposed to 
project um, now in the court system, uh, now really at the county level for permitting. Uh, but right there's there's a number of other projects that are supposed to come online. So can those projects come online sooner than later, if you will? It is interesting to note, and I'm just thinking that this is your talking, Leo, that the two main islands in the chain that have the highest percentage of renewables, Kauai being number one, Hawaii Island being number two, that there is no talk, there is no concern at this point uh, in the near term regarding reserve margin. There seems to be uh, you know, more than enough uh, that uh, compared especially to Maui and Oahu. So I just find that a kind of interesting. I'm not saying that's necessarily causation there was certainly an uh, interesting uh, thing to note. So how about you, Jay? I'll, I'll pass it, pass the baton, the talking stick to you. I do have some questions, Leo. Sure. You know, so uh, Jay is gone. Um, you know, and, uh, we all miss him. He's a great guy. And um, and now you have a new uh, a, a new member of the commission. So that's two significant changes all around the same time. So I wonder how you see um, things changing in terms of attitude, in terms of the way it works, in terms of your administration, Leo. One of the things is, right, kind of get back to just, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit old school, you know me, Jeff. I'm old school, right? Um, I would rather have, right, the honest discussions um, informally at first, that everyone, you know, what page are we all on? Uh, and that includes the utilities, right? The energy utilities, but I like to also do that across the board on the, on the utilities that we regulate, right? What's going on with the water carriers? What's going on with the motor carriers, um, right? And even the private water and wastewater. Right? What do we see? What are their goals? You know, what do we want them to do, right? Of course, make sure that they provide their services, but. You know, down the line, right? I, I, one of the things that I see coming down the pipe is what are do all of these uh, private water fairs, right? I mean, their rates have been changed in the last decade, right? And they have to maintain same like same like the energy utility, right? They have to maintain all that infrastructure, right? But when your rates don't change, right? What we're starting to see, and this is not only in Hawaii, right? We're seeing it actually on the mainland as well. Right, private water companies coming in for like thousand percent increases in their rates, right, for their customers. Right, it's just because they haven't adjusted. So that's that's one of the things I want to try to talk to them about. Is like, you know, how can you uh, come in right more periodically uh, to kind of reduce right that 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 shock right of of rates going up that much. Uh, you know, we had to deal with a couple already. And they're not fun. They're not fun cases to go to. Your, to granted, it's smaller communities because they 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 are smaller groups of customers because they only right provide service to certain areas. But still, I mean, if you're a consumer, right, and suddenly your bill went up a thousand percent, right, that's not fun to deal with. So I think that's that's what I want to kind of kind of get back. To, right? How can we? And and it's even to the point of divide and conquer, right? I mean, I want to talk to, right, the solar industry as well, right? All, all of the developers, like what's happening, right? Um, right, Jenny, uh, Commissioner Potter, right, is very good uh, with that, with that kind of, with that group, if you will, right? It's like, how can we take all of that information and kind of come back, right? To um, kind of come back and and you know, share that information among not only the commissioners, but even our staff. Well, you know, it's interesting you raise that because um, I think that's a great idea. You know, we haven't had the same degree of affable Aloha public conversation, uh, you know, uh, in recent years for a lot of reasons. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum has not been as active, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there are people who grumble about the, uh, Costs and they're not satisfied with the progress and all that. Um, there's there's uh, some hard litigation going where uh, you know the decisions of the PUC have been bouncing back and forth with the Supreme Court. You know, um, and and I I, I re that really touches me personally, Leo, 
you to say that because I think we need more affable public conversation about this. I think that that's what you're talking about. So that that's a good thing. And if you can pull that off, it'll be very good for everyone. Yeah. Um, let me let me go to another question though. What what about um, and this is part of that litigation. What about wood burning energy in Hawaii? Do you think there's a future for that? You know, uh, we have it on Kauai, right? I think it really depends on where it is um, and in what manner, right? I mean, you can nitpick the thing. My, my, my thing on you know any type of renewable energy has been until, right? Someone can say no, it's never going to happen, right? And the only thing we got going for us now is we can't have nuclear, right? You need the act of God, which is the right supermajority vote of the legislature to even make that happen, right? And But look at the technology, nuclear, right? I mean, I just spent last week at the National uh, Association of Regulatory Commissioners, right? Their, their summer meeting. And nuclear was the hottest topic, right? Small nuclear, right, that you can put and can service 20,000, 30,000 homes, right, in the space of basically a transformer that we have today. Right? Uh, granted, I'm not all up on all the environmental issues that, that something like that could bring, but, right, anytime Hawaii is in the room, they're like, well, you know, that's not for us, right? Yeah, well, it'll, be, it'll take a, 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 what is it, a two thirds majority of, yeah. of the uh, state legislature to do that. And it's, uh, it's one of those, may I say, <laughs> this is funny. It's one of those radioactive issues. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, well, you know, but, but yeah, I, I would ahead. rather see, right, kind of like a more balanced portfolio, if you will. Um, I wouldn't go so far as what Senate Bill 2510 did, you know, to put limits. Uh, that, I think, is let the market decide. But, right, I think from the state side and also from the utility side, you know, what are the signals, right, that we send, right? So if we're going to say no to something, right, take it completely off the table, right, that means, you know, don't expect any uh, economic impacts from it, don't expect anything else from it, right? Let's do that so that we can move on, right? But in my book, right, until somebody says that, you know, it's on the table, right? I, I mean, everything is, to me, is, right, uh, you could do it. I mean, maybe the technology is not there as far as like solar and the like, or or the type of stuff we could be doing with solar and or wind. Um, so I, right, I I more of let's make sure we exhaust everything before we start saying no, because that's gonna be right, gonna be it, and we gotta move on, right? And and like for me, yeah, I you know I I like to learn about what's happening in nuclear, but. Realistically, I can't like. I would never say, yeah, try to bring it to Hawaii. Well, who knows? I mean, it depends on on where all of this goes. And going back to uh, you know the point about how fast we move. I mean, there are people out there. Um, Marco knows some of them, and I know some of them who don't think that the state is moving fast enough. You know, we had these dreams, if you will, uh, back in the '90s and the aught years uh, about you know really moving along on this. And there are those who feel. We're not moving fast enough. On the other hand, um, they have so many agencies and officials in the energy sector. It's hard to see exactly where um, the quote leadership would come from. When governor, state energy office, the chairs of the energy committees, uh, probably missing a few, and of course the PUC. Uh, so, my, you know, what do you say to them when they say, "Gee whiz, you know, what's the real long plan? Are we going to make it?" to 2045, are we moving fast enough? And, and inherent in that, Leo, is what can the PUC do, uh, possibly under your administration, to move the needle faster? Yeah, I think, um, you know, part, part of me is, right, we have, uh, we have existing and we've set up as well, right, kind of like these procedures, if you will, right, to take care of certain things. And I think sometimes we kind of lost sight of, you know, what are we really trying to achieve, right? We're, we're, you know, part of these policies have been more protectionary, if you will, right? But that does add time. So it's, it's one of those, what do you do, right? You, we, 
we were moving at a good clip, right? And then somebody says, hold on, right? You're moving too fast, right? And then you put in a policy or you put in a statute, which, right, really extends the extends it, right? And, and, and I'm looking at it from a policy aspect in, in this regard, right? So how do we now, right, kind of look at or work with the process we got, right, to expedite it here and there, right? And, and we're trying different things, right? And then the incentives to HECO, right? Kind of like working with the counties as far as permitting, right? Can we, can we, you know, make sure that we, we're all on the same page on that, right? Is it a priority for the county as well, right? Or, or are we playing the game of, well, that's really a state priority. So let the state figure it out, right? But we can only figure it out to a point. Right, yeah. Um, without being, um, I don't know. I mean, like taking over everything, right? And like declaring martial law on <laughs> everything. We can't. We can't do we're, that. Right? We're not ready for that. No. We're not ready for that. So, <laughs> I think what we need to do is is really kind of work with what we got now, right? Improve processes. Right. We're looking at uh, even within the commission, right? How do we Kind of move these dockets a little quicker uh, through it, right? We we have already instituted kind of like a, a two tier system. So if somebody comes in, you know, under an RFP, right, with a PPA, and this and we look at it, and the triad says there's no real problems, right? There's no environmental. They took care of that. There's no whatever, right? Those guys can get out in in about four to six months out of the commission. Now, the other ones, right, the other level is, right, there's a call for an environmental impact statement, right? And that already takes a year in itself, right? Especially if you've got to do a full-blown one. So when you do that, right, you're looking at at least a year, right, plus, right, to get out of the commission. So, so and, right, we, we put a lot of effort into the ones that we can expedite real quickly, right? And the ones that have to go kind of into the process, if you will, right? We just kind of work on those over time, right? Because we know we have to, right? We have to wait for something else to be done until we can actually act, right? Or and or do our process, mm -hmm. right? There's one other thing I wanted to ask you about, um, and before Marco mm. resumes, um, and that is this: a lot of people feel, a lot of people notice that we're still paying way high than other states, even in a time when, you know, uh, the, the, the federal government hasn't been able to uh, execute clean energy in the way that Joe Biden wants to. Mm -hmm. um, and we are still way high in terms of our pricing. And I know, you know, the, the commission has often said we're going to try to lower that, we're going to lower those prices. Um, but, you know, how does that look at this point in time? What's your perspective on that? There was one commentator recently said, Oh, if we do it right, if we use the technology, we can get energy to be free. Free, he said. I'm not sure that's really possible in our world today, um, but maybe someday, maybe who knows what. Uh, what. What do you think the prospects are of knocking down these 50 cents per kilowatt hour uh, rates to you know, way lower for everyone in the state? I think it's doable. Uh, in my book, it's going to take time. And, you know, the one I, I look to is really KIUC, right? 10 years ago, they started on this, right? Kind of try to go to 100% uh, RPS much quicker than anyone, right? Very, you know, at, at that time, if you ask the board, they're probably like, wow, we're really shooting for the stars, right? But then when you take a look at it, right? They were, I, I, if memory serves me correct, and I wasn't in the energy area uh, 10 years ago, right? More on the planning side. But I understand that it was like somewhere around 48 cents per kilowatt hours for residential, right? That was their rate. Uh, 10 years later, right? Two solar projects in, you have a small biomass, right? Uh, wood burning plant there and other things that they're doing, right? And so this is pre uh, pump storage hydro, right? Kind of pre next level of renewable resources for the island. And over the years, I, I still remember when that first farm went in, right? A friend of mine from the island called me like, why isn't my rates going down? Like, well, you can't expect, it's not gonna happen the day 
they turn on that 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 solar plant. But ten years later now, right? They've reduced it ten cents. They're around thirty eight, right? And they keep trying to push it down lower and lower. So I, to me, I I I think it's going to happen. Uh, you're gonna see a certain level. Uh, come 2030, you're going to see a, a, another level of 2040, 2045. And then from there, right, it's how much more as you have all these systems on, right, and it's coming from renewable energy, which is supposedly cheaper, right? It all depends what it's what you're relating it to. But then, right, then you're really going to see, right, uh, I don't know how how low it's going to go. Uh, I'm hoping for at least getting it down into the teens, but you're talking, right, 20 years from now. We should all live so long, right? <laughs> okay, Marco, yeah, your time to resume. We don't have much time left, but go for it. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. So just to riff off what you said uh, regarding KIUC, Leo, so I believe it was back in May, a couple months ago, that for the, the first time ever, the first time ever, the residential rate on Kauai dropped below the residential rate on Oahu. That was a major, a pretty pretty darn big thing. And, I, and it goes to David Bissell at KAUC's uh, uh, progressive, aggressive pursuit of cost-effective renewables. So I think that my, my last question to you is, the commission ordered Hawaiian Electric to roll out this battery bonus program on Oahu last year. And then earlier this year, ordered the Maui Electric to roll it out for Maui proper. And my, so my quick question to you is, hey, what about us guys here on uh, the Big Island? Uh, is there a battery bonus program in our future? Uh, well, you got to take a look at what, why we did those battery bonus programs, right? It was all around the whole reliability idol. Right, Wahoo AES was going to go down. There was a reliability issue there, right? So what could we stand up quickly? Uh, and actually, Hawaiian Electric proposed had proposed it right in one of the dockets. So, uh, right, we took a look at that, and yes, we could do it. Hindsight, but one item that we didn't really take a look at is the permitting, right? How it would uh, over overwhelm the, the Department of Planning and Permitting as far as the volume of permits that are coming in. Uh, and then given, right, they had some staff issues as well, right? You've always had a shortage of staff from at least, in, at least at, from my knowledge, right, in the last administration, right, under Caldwell. So, right, not the best thing. So on Maui, same thing, right? We're seeing the possibility of, right, Kahului shutting down, solar projects getting delayed and the like. So we said, okay, that's the next, the next area that probably wants a battery bonus program. Uh, this one, lessons learned. We're actually talking to the county, making sure that, right? I think they just, it rolled out in June, HECO and the solar developers uh, reported to us that there was only five applications on Maui that have come in. Uh, and then, so, but we're, we're right now we're talking to um, the planning department there and making sure that, right, they're ready because there may be an influx of people wanting to uh, get their battery bonus and get their battery and our solar panels uh, permitted. So we're kind of working through all of that. Now, Big Island, is there any chance of, you know, reliability issues? You, know, you noted earlier, right? You guys do not. Um, so right those that was the premise around instituting the battery bonus program uh, remember too right that whole thing about battery bonus is right that the utility gets to tap your your battery your battery reserves right certain periods of time for x amount of price right so there's the other that's the other part of it so right you got to have willing customers not only that do they want the battery but they also need to, right, for the next, I believe it's like the next five years or, or so, they, they need to um, allow the utility to tap that power should they need it. Well, thank you for, for uh, updating me on that, uh, Leo. And I'm just going to put a plug in directly to you. 
uh, perhaps tell you something you you already know. I think, you know, the the virtual power plant notion is not just something you know in the land of the Jetsons in the future. I mean, it's actually happening more and more. Uh, it will be happening in this state. It will be happening in various parts of the mainland. And I happen to believe that in order to accelerate that, which I think is a good thing, virtual power plant and having both solar and storage distributed across wide territories rather than centralized generation, that that is a good thing and 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 it de is deserving of uh, incentives, which obviously uh, is being done on Oahu, is being done on Maui. So. Uh, I hope that it's uh, not just seen kind of in the narrower lens of having adequate reserve margin, but also kind of the bigger scheme of things, which is we really do need to go kind of all in uh, as far as virtual power plants, more solar on rooftops and more storage distributed. Yeah, okay. Well, just about out of time, Leo, but uh, that's just another way of saying we'd like to have you back on a regular basis. Uh, we'd like to, you to see think tech as a way where you can express your views about, you know, things that are happening at the PUC. Marco and I have an infinite number of questions we want to ask you a dynamic number, always growing, always changing. So thank you so much for coming down. Leo, uh, Leo is the brand new chair of the PUC and, and thank you, Marco co-host on this show. We really appreciate uh, your input and, and your expertise. Um, thank you both. Aloha. Thanks thank very you. much, guys. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.